Okay, by my electronic so camera. Ricky, it is now Dad, 10 o'clock. On December 27, 10 a.m., 2022, I call into a session and into order Northeast Texas Municipal Water District. And if you would ask Mr. Jack Sandwich, please bless My us. Honor. I have the following we come to you this morning and ask your blessings <laughs> on and guidance with the affairs that come before the board today as we represent the, our individual cities, but more importantly, the district as a whole. Help us to work collaboratively and cooperatively one to the other to take care of these affairs in a meaningful and a responsible way. Father, we give you the glory in all things worthwhile, and we ask these things be blessed, blessed in your Savior's name. Amen. 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 Yeah, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you're in the public comment section of our agenda, and I see Robin here. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. And we also have Mr. Womack, and uh, at the, we're always thrilled to have people coming and speak to us. We don't very often have it, so we're thrilled to have, to have a guest to come and talk to us. Mr. Womack, the floor is yours. I don't have anything to say. Okay, thank you, sir. But his grandmother used to come. That's right. To okay, yes. Yeah. Well, well that, that was a joy to have here. And all the years she was on the SRBA, too. Yeah. Wonderful lady. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Family of commitment to service. We're, thank you for coming, Mr. Womack. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have next our consideration of minutes that's in your packet. I assume everyone's had an opportunity to review them. Are there any changes before we call for approval? Is there a motion to approve these minutes? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes in the November 28th. No second. Sandy and Stan. All in favor of approving these? Is there, is there any discussion, any further discussion on this motion? If not, all in favor of approving the minutes for last meeting and kept saying aye. Aye. And uh, closed by the same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Monthly investment, Ms. Cyrus Brantley, you have the floor. Um, you had the investment report in your packet. Um, I'll just go and three um, invoices we received the Corps of Engineer after we had sent the packet out. It's in your binders for you to look at. Um, that's just our annual payment to the Corps. That's, uh, we paid 13.4% of the o and cost. So that's, that was not in the packet when it was mailed to you. Um, for our financials, for capital, we had quite a bit um, that we had budgeted that we have finally gotten in. We have lab equipment, two spectrometers and two turbometers that came in. The gas mask that we budgeted came in. The eight sludge dump plug valves. Um, and we also had a major leak at the Jefferson, at, at Jefferson, and we capitalized it. It was pretty big. They did a lot of concrete uh, work to reinforce the 90 degrees elbows, I'm sure Dominic will talk to you about later, but we decided to capitalize it. That. So that's in the capital. For Fund 100, we received our annual payment from the City of Longview. And um, for Fire 100, the only uh, dynamic trial is the only ones that have applied for the Fire Hydrant so far. Um, also, for Fund 2 and 300, we had our semi annual generator <coughs> that comes twice a year to service our generators. And then we also had our annual tanner uh, permit fees for TCC. That will happen in uh, this month's financials. And the uh, fire hydrant program, we only have Diane and Tron Road. Right. Right. So yes, none, none of the seven cities have. What's the deadline for that? Uh, May 31st for May 30 the first phase. And who were the two? Diane and Tryon. I'm sure Dallas our city will do it on May 30th. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> Once again, we can't force people to do it. Yeah, yeah we can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and usually, uh, yeah, we have to, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Um, everyone has the monthly investment financial reports and current accounts, and to consider the alternative to pay the invoices for professional services. There are motions to do so. So moved. Second. 
I'll second. And discussion. Uh, KSA, Brian Sledge, and uh, Industrial Helicopter, are those the only ones other than the one you just mentioned? Yes, sir. Those are the three. Uh, is that completed now, the, the storage tank there at one store? Do we know? Yeah, not yet. It is, oh, I'm sorry. Is the ground storage tank completed? No, no, it's not completed. It's it's progressing on schedule, so that okay. so the tank tank itself uh, will be completed on time. Uh, we are we're predicting probably water going through it uh, sometimes first two weeks of January, uh, and uh, but then the the two extra months will be used to uh, to uh, uh, demolish the old one and. So they haven't started. No, they cannot. They, they cannot remove the old one until, until the new one, one is hundred percent operational. Gotcha. Uh, uh, because because of the, the way how the water is entering your wells and uh, and then it's being processed through the through your pumps to the system. Okay. So, so that one has to be completely done and finished. But like I said, they've been doing a remarkable job on communicating and That's good. and getting it done. Yeah. So. Thank you. Excellent. Any further discussion? I got a question. On the Lee to Jefferson, what, what was the decision to capitalize that expense? It was uh, $10,000. And we, as per auditor request, we should capitalize anything over five. And also, it wasn't just a normal like repair, they did additional concrete work. So that was the main idea. I think also it extends the useful life of the NSA. Was that that air valve leak? No. So no, that's a different thing. That's, that was a different yeah. thing. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of approving the financials as previously stated in case of saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same sign. Motion passed unanimously and those are approved. Sarah, what about Southside project? Uh, they met November 14th. Um, we had, I mean, I'm sorry, December. Yeah, December 14th. Uh, we um, and we had a short meeting. We had Mr. Baker and Greg and Fred were out, so um, it, it, they approved all the financials. They didn't have any questions. Is Fred still doing okay? Is he doing all right? He's doing good. Yes, sir. All right. Um, is there uh, a motion to approve the financials for the South Side Steering Committee? I'll I'll make make a a Go ahead, Steve. I'll say. I'll make a motion to approve the financial report. I second. Okay. Well, I understand. Uh, is there any further discussion on this motion? Not all in favor of indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Water production, Mr. Dominic. Good to see you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. Uh, to you, Dominic. Good job this weekend, buddy. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, uh, we had a uh, so I always start with the raw water quality. Well, uh, the last few days uh, had a little exception because we had a, a mini storm URI event, basically. Uh, uh, so, uh, so I'll give you a, that's not in the, in the packet, uh, <coughs> but I'll give you a quick update. Uh, no substantial damage to report, uh, no interruption of service to report, <coughs> no boil water notices throughout member cities to report. Uh, so just those three things already are better than Storm Uri. Uh But our flows were actually rivaling Storm Uri because the demands went up three to four times. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to let you know, let's say City of Jefferson decided to take 1.2 million gallons every day, mm -hmm. uh, uh, comparably to about 400,000 on mm -hmm. normal days. Diana times three, Tryon Road times two. So uh, everybody decided uh, we were doing constant flow in between 5.5 uh, to 6.5 million gallons. Um, again, the, the plant, uh, again, uh, you know, didn't disappoint us. So uh, the additional problems we had this year was a, a, a little shorter staffing uh, issues, but like I said, everything turned out uh, good. Uh, so uh, so I'm, I'm glad I don't have to report something, you know, negative per se. Uh, but you will have a much more thorough report on the next board meeting when I can give you some totals. And then, you know, there's things we are still not completely out of the woods because with thaw, with the ice thawing out, there might be some additional leaks. We just, within the last hour, there was four emergency locates called by Jefferson. So those are the things they're finding out today, but they are addressing it. So hopefully it will be all good. Island um, dosage before this event, we were actually able to go all the way down to 40 milligrams per liter. 
which is like the lowest we did probably in, in a, over a decade. That's so incredible. so we're trying to, uh, well, I'll I tell you what, we were doing 50 milligrams per liter through this event and our effluent filterabilities are 0 0.02, 0 0.03. So non-existent. Our filters lasting 400 hours. So so plant is <coughs> plant is dialed in. Um, so um, update on Pittsburgh groundwater pump number two right now has a swing check valve versus uh, clay valve. That's the picture on a on a second page. Uh, uh, Steve Labelle crew uh, exchange uh, that valve, so we no longer have to pay a pretty extensive maintenance on those clay valves. Uh, it's just, just a a uh, check valve with uh, with uh, uh, now being a VFD variable frequency drive. Uh, that's going to make it much more better. Uh, also, update on Pittsburgh. We we made Pittsburgh run continuously with a slower flow. Communicated with Tim, with the city. No interruptions to report. No problems to report. We did an overflow. It went like nothing ever happened. So, so uh, again, Pittsburgh plant uh, uh, managed to to stand up to occasion. Um, we. Uh, uh, Purchased the generator. It's going to be 28 to 33 weeks before it comes in, and then uh, you know, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, City of Pittsburgh is actually uh, uh, they pour their concrete pod and they're doing electrical work on finishing the their portion of Senate Bill 3 compliance of the generator for the plant and for their pump station. So they probably got feeling they both going to come in probably within a month or two of each other. So this is on schedule for next winter to power interruption be no problems whatsoever. Um, so uh, we did coordinate all the freezing uh, uh, events and communication <coughs> with the city of Pittsburgh pre this event. Uh, Glenn Lawler, Michael Parvino, and uh, one backup operator here were on standby if something would happen. Um, on the tenor side, um, uh, update on staffing, we, we were able to uh, hire uh, a new employee. Uh, and she is starting uh, on uh, on Tuesday, uh, New Year's. So that's the first female employee operator which we which we got at the district. So so that's a little milestone there. Uh, uh, her name is Christy Smith. She's a native of Few Springs, Texas, and uh, she's ready to work. She's ready to make it a career. And I got a feeling that that's going to be a really good addition. So right. I'll keep you guys awesome. posted. Mm -hmm. Um, Todd York, unfortunately, is working his short-term disability case considering early retirement. His, his health is deteriorated and he's not coming back, most likely. Uh, uh, so when that solves itself, we will be able to move on and fill the second position if needed. Um, so um, JW Electric uh, uh, finished putting new VFD pump, uh, VFD controls. Uh, on pump number 2001 for Southside. So right now Southside is back to a three VFDs, three pumps, fully functional. Startup was done and we are running this pump right now. Uh, no hiccups. It's, it, it's a very, very well done job. Um, I just got a text from uh, our neighbors here uh, 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 for a coding and they are, they we are scheduling finishing cracks on Basin 1 at Tenor Plant for 4th of January. So. So hopefully by uh, first week and the first week of the new year, there will be no more cracks, uh, and then uh, basically <coughs> we'll be semi ready to go after we render the valves. Yes, sir. Yeah, and also that same company is uh, sealing the roof <coughs> of this building. Yeah, as you know, we've got uh, water leaks throughout the building. Um, they're applying uh, their coating. To our metal roof that come down and they also uh, power washed it and also reconnected uh, a lot of places where the metal had lifted on, on the roof so they, they've done a really good job they're in the middle of it cold weather kind of interrupted uh, progress uh, but once it's all done we've already bought the uh, uh, acoustic tiles to uh, uh, remove all of the stain, uh, stain tiles, so the building's going to definitely look better. And I don't know if any of you have driven by at night. We've also, uh, in the process of making sure that our exterior lighting uh, is working on this building, and it's uh, just one of the all know those improvements are nearing completion. So you know, it's some of the cracks in the basement uh -huh. are. I'm assuming they have to. 
add additional heat to get that material to dry in this weather? Or? No, there's uh, uh, they literally calling it uh, NASA materials. That's that's uh, that's a compounds at the NSF approved for for water treatment, which which bind uh, uh, like they're using a certain kind of looks like a rope and they fill the crack and then they put this uh, uh, mixture of epoxy and some other compounds which uh, <coughs> adheres to a concrete and binds it together so actually for them the best time to do this is the cold month because then it's actually spread out and they actually do need to use water as an agent to activate that oh, so, well, so uh, what we have to do from our side is we need to because on the other, uh, because this is the outer basin, so the outer wall is covered by dirt. So we need to expose on the other side dirt all the way to the bottom. Uh, with help of try and road new equipment, we'll be able to do it pretty seamlessly. It's uh, like a ditch witch. Uh, it's called wet back excavator. So we won't we won't have to um, use shovels per se. And once we do this, that will be that will come in, and then that will fill it up. <coughs> And then they will have to put water on it actually in order for it to, to activate. So that's what they did on filter five. Filter five um, it's not leaking. It has that very small leak that will readdress it. But because uh, that every time there's bad, there's cold weather, those all those walls are actually working. Okay, and uh, and it's plus H, and that's the crack on basin one. You can see through. Mm. On the top oh, uh, so 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 it's a it's a it, yeah. but like I said, it will be done for uh, okay. uh, few springs and danger filled lines uh, we are finally replacing the spool pieces in the and removing the old venturi meters from the vaults which were interfering with the, with the uh, master meter readouts so we're gonna have a brand new spool pieces perfectly ready for Sonic meters to be put in without in interference. So, so that's that's a that's a that's a good housekeeping item. It's gonna last us forever. So, so that's gonna be done. <coughs> hopefully, Wednesday or Thursday. So, I will keep you guys posted on that on the next board. <coughs> Filters five and eight, seal compressor and dryer capital project is almost done. I think I'm submitting last PO uh, to be paid today, and then Osiris will be able to close this project. Uh, I think we're going to come up under budget on this, and uh, and that the whole five through eight uh, problems we had through last year, they are basically gone. There's just some minuscule parts we're waiting for, which will be replaced, and then they will be pretty much like new. So uh, we got some spare parts with it as well, so there was money well spent. Um, the Two new sludge bags uh, arrived. Uh, they are 90 by 100 feet. They don't, we're going to be laying them out probably sometimes in the January, uh, uh, and uh, and then we're going to be drying out the, the bags which are ready. We'll repeat that process what we did with the uh, previous bags, and like I said, there was obvious savings there, so we, we're going to continue doing it that way. Um, remaining four plug valves, they're just waiting for the time where the basin needs to be cleaned, and then we will replace so hopefully within the first two months of the year that will be completely done but the purchase portion is done she closed the project so uh, and now the biggest update I need to let you guys know Smith pump update so on Friday they actually arrived well not they uh, on Friday we we got divers in so believe it or not Friday morning there was uh, a three gentlemen arrived from Ron Perrin uh, company those are the guys who did the tanks inspections for us uh, 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 I canceled my vacation the day came back just to assist them were there for about four hours uh, they they took a dive into uh, into our pump house there uh, unfortunately there's so much silt and build up inside that they weren't able to see any so uh, so after speaking with Wayne, we are we are looking at at uh, the next step. Uh, most likely, we have to dredge it up, okay? Because it's it's just filling up. It's basically what it is. It's a it's a small tank, and the water going through the raw water, and that every minute it goes through a little bit of that sedimentation stays. And even though we're pulling a lot of water, it builds up, it builds up. And the problem is where there are shells building up. It's going. It's basically becoming almost like a concrete 
structure, so it's not as easy to remove. So, so we'll be addressing it ASAP. We got feeling that could be the reason why our pump is not um, performing to the specs. So, uh, and I'll get better reports for the next board meeting because we noticed some some trends during this event, uh, which are concerning, and I think the reason is inside that that well house. So, so. Uh, but it's not, I mean, I, I think we are getting ahead of, you know, uh, as far as, I think we're going to be addressing it before it becomes <coughs> a, a serious problem, so. <coughs> yes. uh, and um, so uh, I'm going to, I shared the, 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 uh, their findings with John Z. So, uh, so we will be talking uh, probably this week and seeing what we're going to do because Smith Pump is kind of, Trying to see when we can pay the rest of the of the contract. So um, hopefully, I'll have a better news for your or final news by the next board meeting. Um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead. Other than that, we are we are good to go. One last question. Yes, sir. Mike. Uh, and I may have missed this along the way, but is is there any more talk about the bridge at 155? So bridge bridge on 155 should have start on August. Uh, that should that the first work should have been done. So so far, the only work they did on bridge one on the one fifty five was removing the power lines. They reconnected uh, uh, us to a uh, Avenger site uh, transformer tra transform <coughs> transformator station, whatever, and then uh, uh, the horse cities on the other side. So it actually benefited us since then. But as far as breaking dirt for anything or tree removal, that. We did not get any updates. So, do you know which side of the bridge? Like, let's say you're coming from 259, traveling. What is that? It would be on the right hand side. It'd be on the right hand uh -huh. side. That's it's where that's where the power lines were. They, they're gonna go. So across from that little um, uh, uh, trailer park uh, marina. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, they they're gonna be basically going a little bit to the right, and then it's gonna be on uh, just the bridge going over, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, it's going to happen, <laughs> but I got feelings. I mean, we so far Robert didn't say that we got any update. I'm on that mailing list as well, so uh, um, it just probably needs to be on somebody's desk long enough until it's you know gets to the next step. But as far as I know, no cancellation of project. No, maybe just the delays. So thank you. Well, they've done the condemnation of the two houses up the road over there. You know where it's coming down for the old power lines were. Oh, they did. I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Uh, those two houses have to come out up there where the power lines went down because that's where the road is going to go yes. down to the new bridge. Yes. Any further questions for Dominic? Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much. <coughs> okay, number eight. We're going to consider the approval of a water sales contract with the Brooks, Brooks Petroleum for water supply of Lake Ohio. Okay. Good morning. We have a uh, oil and gas producer who has been contracting <coughs> with us since 2014 uh, for water out of Lake of the Pines. And it's kind of a Texas two step process. They have an agreement with us which allows them to get a license from the Corps. And allows them to set up uh, a pump and a uh, pipeline to carry the water to where they need to take it from Lake of the Pines. And it's kind of a chicken or the egg type thing. The Corps requires a contract with us. We require a license from the Corps. And um, I was going to do my typical two looks for you on this issue, discuss it today, act on it in January but they are needing to resolve their core license uh, with a uh, approved and executed contract by the end of 2022 uh, without giving them a big delay. They have a six well site in Harrison County that they're trying to uh, complete and they uh, asked me to expedite this, which I said, sure, I'll, I'll uh, approach the board. Don't they already, do they already have a pump or it's existing? They right? have, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they have board. been um, working with us since 2014. Um, but like I said, they... It's just probably come out for renewal. Well, well this is actually a renewal, yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, however, they're, they need new licenses because they move their diversion points around. And um, 
this is accommodating their license to divert and it's in a location that suits their ability to transport the water to where it's needed in, in Harrison County. So <clears throat> I'm recommending approval of this. Uh, this term is a little bit longer than what they previously contracted with us for. Uh, their core, their, their draft core license uh, extends through July 31st, 2027. Um, and uh, they're wanting 2 million barrels, uh, 80, which is 84 million gallons, which is 257 acre feet a year. So it's a relatively small amount of water. Um, I'm thinking uh, th that full volume at our raw water rate would be about $25,000. So um, I'm recommending approval. I move we adopt the contract of Brooks Petroleum. Second. We moved and seconded that we adopt the Brooks contract. Is any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of this approving this contract, any keep it saying aye. Aye. And opposed by the same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, uh, next, number nine, approval of an agreement uh, for legal services with Walt Sears, Mr. Owen. Well, um, Walt Sears, attorney at law in San Antonio, has offered to support our ongoing negotiations with the North Texas Municipal <coughs> Water District on repurposing industrial water that is under contract with several industrial uh, entities, uh, specifically power generators, uh, for water out of Lake of the Pines. And these contracts have, we're, we're at risk of having them uh, lapse, uh, plus the water sales not being consummated, which could significantly affect our revenue stream. So the opportunity presents itself to possibly uh, repurpose this water for municipal supply and we've got some entities in the Metroplex that are interested in potentially contracting for this water. Um, but it's rather complicated. It's going to require us to uh, support their negotiations with these industrial corporations to buy out the contracts with these industries. Uh, also, it's going to require us to amend the water rights on Lake of the Pines. As you know, we own the water rights in Lake of the Pines, even though it's a Corps of Engineers owned reservoir, we own the water rights. They're appropriated by the state of Texas to us. So it's going to involve not only these contracting issues, which are relatively uh, complicated, uh, also the water rights. We're going to have to change the purpose of use designation from industrial to municipal with the TCEQ. And Ultimately, there will be an interbasin transfer uh, permit issued by the state uh, that allows it to go from the water to go from one river basin to another. So, fairly complicated stuff. We have a great law firm that we are that you have us uh, engaged with in Austin that helps us with uh, water rights and water contracting matters. Um, they just helped us complete the Brooks Petroleum. Uh, renewal, uh, which was the first time we've renewed it since 2019, and uh, so they're very handy with this type of work. But Walt brings a long time understanding of Texas water law. Um, he is recognized <coughs> as a leader in Texas water law and water policy. He's currently the president of the Texas Water Conservation Association, uh, and also chair chairs a lot of the subcommittees in TWCA that directs the development of proposed laws that are being introduced in the legislature uh, with regards to water resources and water resources management. So he's very adept at uh, consulting in those types of issues. He's relied on throughout the state by water district and river authority managers throughout, throughout the state of Texas. Um, this uh, agreement is for a two-year term. Uh, it does have the ability to renew, uh, but once again, that'll be largely driven by the progress we make over the uh, next two years uh, with regards to these uh, contracts as well as the uh, water rights issues. 
Um, it does have a cancellation where either party can cancel with 30 days written notice. Um, the consideration will be $5,000 a month, which is $60,000 a year. Um, and um, his expenses are limited uh, if he incurs travel or other expenses related to participating in meetings. Uh, he's authorized to expend $600 a month. If he's going to exceed $600 a month, he has to get prior approval from, from me. And I'm recommending approval and authorization to execute the agreement. Make a motion we approve the professional services contract with Walt Sears to assist the district in more contract and all the most moving parts associated with this contract. Is there a second? Second. We move and seconded that we approve the Walt Sears contract. Motion was made by Mr. Jack Salmon and second was by Jimmy. Are there any further discussion of this contract? Hearing none, all in favor of this contract can take by saying aye. aye. Opposed by the same sign. And motion carries unanimously. We'll now move on to number uh, 10, which is the sale of water to the city of Lone Star. Uh, Mr. Olin. Um, we are currently developing a supplemental contract to sell water to the city of Lone Star. They have a development that they're trying uh, to develop called the Serenity Development. It's outside of the city limits. And um, we are uh, still drafting that agreement. We're doing it, doing it in cooperation with the uh, city of Lone Star. Uh, our attorneys are currently working on it. Um, it's going to allow the, the city of uh, Lone Star to sell water in this subdivision. And um, we engage KSA to do an evaluation of our infrastructure and ability to make this service available to Serenity. The, K the engineering evaluation indicated that, uh, yeah, we can make this water available. There is potentially a need at some point it's going to uh, um, quicken the need for possibly additional storage for the city yes. for the city of uh, Lone Star uh, but once again they're fully aware that we've we shared we shared the study uh, uh, expense with the city of Lone Star and um, they're aware of, aware of the findings of the study uh, we're going to be recommending approval of this contract in January, but we wanted you all to uh, be aware that this is pending. There is still some uh, platting issues. This contract is requisite to allowing the subdivision to be platted with the county. Also, there's on-site sewage issues uh, that are still contingent on lot size of the smaller uh, parcels in the subdivision um, that are still being discussed. We ultimately will sign off on what is decided and um, so far... Because it's all the light we have. Right. So... Um, Where do they stand with their work on the TCUQ? approvals that was my question too yeah my, my understanding is we're still waiting on completion of the design and um, but I'm not aware of any for us there's no issues TCQ requires now from the new update that has to be half an acre to have a type an aerobic system on this is on the property being that it's on the lake you can do just a smidgen below which would require a drip system we have those around Lake of the Pines but they have to be pre-approved and also but since there's no water wells on the subdivision because the water is off the meters centralized system that's not going to be a factor which is normally a factor when you have a smaller lot because you have to be 50 feet and 100 feet from the tank and then the disposal field but right now everything seems to be good and we're just making sure if everybody can get a half an acre for each parcel, then we're gonna be okay. But They'll end up doing the aerobic system, is it? They're all doing aerobics. 
Oh, every one of them, and it's we just gotta be cautious because it's around the lake that everyone has. What about the uh, fire hydrant situation, line yeah. sizing? I, I might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. That would be Dominic's area. <laughs> so the, the study KSA performed was, will the new subdivision affect any within city citizen of city of Lone Star? Means if, if, if city allows this project to go and, and opens the water line, which belongs to the city, to the subdivision, will it affect anybody there by pressure or water availability? And uh, the study proved that there will not be any adverse effect on anybody in the city, doesn't matter where they live. The only effect is right now is that they basically are reaching maximum amount of connections based on their 100,000 gallons elevated storage tank. And that's TCQ rules, so they are so let's say if tomorrow they want to add two more of the subdivisions, they, they will have to go up on the size of their storage tank. It's not our. We have plenty of water for them for, for three or four more cities of Lone Star. Mm -hmm. Okay? But uh, their tank is only 100,000 gallons, and mm -hmm. that's what limits the, the farther growth. So they will have to, but that's what the report been presented to the city council secretary. The, uh, general manager here, myself, and uh, subdivision developer. To answer your question on the fire protection, that becomes just the additional line. And uh, speaking with actually Landon Tidmore, the fire chief, um, the the water pressure there in the subdivision is about 90 pounds, so that should be plentiful for any fire. On top of it, every single time they're going in a long start, they're tearing water with them just in case something happens. So, so there was no concern voiced by a fire chief of any problems with the firefighting. So. Now, on our side, the meter will be put in on the six inch line pre subdivision, <coughs> and any inch of water or any gallon of water going past that meter is going to be charged at the rate you guys. You guys uh, uh, quote the city, and then city was <coughs> going to decide on whatever rate they want to give the developer. That's not our to to uh, to judge, but so the city. I guess in, in a nutshell, at this point, uh, they got some of the earlier issues squared away with TCEQ and have gotten everything basically at least on paper. Mm -hmm. At this point, that where, where, where the situation sits is, on our side, we did literally just a courtesy work to, to help them figure it out if there would be any effect. To us, there is none. Besides the water, you guys you know it's going to be going and the charging. But for the city, they now they, are, they have the peace of mind, knowing that that's not going to hurt somebody who lives on the other side of Lone Star because they put a very expensive house on the other side, which is outside city limits for people who did not pay any taxes into that uh, 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 municipality. So, so to the next step is city needs to deal with the developer and do all the steps. Uh, um, is there any chance the city will annex that? Uh -huh. uh, I think that question was asked at the meeting with a judge with Wall Sears a couple months ago, and uh, there was no direct answer. There's no direct answer because the annexation will have to take place at a later date. But once it is annexed, and it will be annexed, is our rate stay the same at that point, or we go back to the normal rate that we charge the city of Lone Star? Well, I would imagine that needs to be decided now. Yeah. That's one of the questions I have. Are uh, we well, satisfied with metering of this water by the city to make sure we're not going to be subsidizing? any water going out to this development. We won't be subsidizing well, at this point, but we could be once it's all annexed. We would. Well, once it's, it's annexed, it's, it's yeah, in the city. That's, that's my started. question. Now, if, it, if this was already <laughs> annexed, we wouldn't be going through all this. No, if that, was, if, that, if, that if that subdivision was built on the other side of the street, uh, they wouldn't even talk to us about <laughs> one thing about it. It would be just additional yeah. house, additional business, additional whatever your cities do. That's the water contract you get with us, and that's it, it goes for the rate city gets a dollar forty-eight. Uh, that's what it is. So, yeah. Okay. Each thousand gallons, one dollar forty-eight. 
I would assume once it gets annexed, then it goes back to dollar forty-eight. But I don't know if the contract says something different. I don't know. Uh, well, I, I will check, check on that. Annexed, the only thing they have to do is provide police and fire service, and then they have to. You do have to end up supplying water and sewer at some point. Now, I, this is just a third party I heard, but there was some talking about, you know, the sale of this development was based on saying this is not within city limits to, to, to sweeten the deal, taxes, whatever. So I don't know. This is something city would, would have to answer. And, and but like I said, that's, that's a really good question. I mean, we'll address that with the mayor as well as the developer as what they are anticipating and we'll make sure that the contract addresses didn't, didn't post we already uh, we'll we'll say go to Wayne no that's right that's I was just wondering excuse me uh, did, we, did we already establish a rate yeah. we talked about it yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we already have on rate. one we established a rate months ago in this board yeah. meeting we were just saying once it's Things annexed you're right I understand that yeah <coughs> it would be an attempt to try to figure out what's going to happen in the future and I think that's a matter of discussion with the city now Wayne will probably yeah. conduct is that correct yes okay. hey, uh, Bob and I have a question for you though <laughs> I'm still uh, betwixt and between how does the developer know how many lots he has to sell without knowing the semi pervious cover on those lots well, well the, the, yeah. I'm talking to me or Dalton? Yeah, sorry, I'm talking to you. Sorry, me? Okay. Yeah. As far as well, actually, the road systems are concerned, there's a big difference between a four bedroom house and a two car garage. And oh, yeah. A five we, bedroom and a three car garage, a swimming pool, and a tennis court. <laughs> we go by the TCP, goes by the footage in the bedrooms of the home. That is how we determine how big the system is. And just like a RV travel trailer is 40 gallons per day. So, because it just they don't, they're yeah. smaller. But yes, when you go into okay. your homes, that's how we did the square footage and the amount of bedrooms that's in a home. As it seems far as to me, like if you have a lot of semi pervious cover, you're not going to, you oh, have restricted percolation. Well, and that restricts the number of lots you have to sell. What happened on this one? is I actually went out and did a inspection and I saw that there was a subdivision going up and then I came back and asked Robert if we had a subdivision review which we did not which created this big explosion that we now have um, but they should have with the subdivision review that gives you the amount of lots, how many acres you have, you have to have half an acre. That is the rule now of TCEQ. That is our rules of Texas. And um, things like Lake of the Pines was grandfathered in because <coughs> before 89, we didn't have the rules. Lake of the Pines lots are like 0.23 is a little different. So there, some of those are grandfathered, but this is brand new. This will not be. You have to have <coughs> it. So now they should, their lots should be measured for at least half an acre, and that will give them how many. And then it has to be engineered. When you come out there and you do the, come out to, okay, I want this home with this bedrooms and whoever their engineer is, they'll come out there and say, okay, well, this is, what you can do and this is what you can't do. That's that's how you have to have it done now. All contractors have someone that they use to do their septic systems. And if not, they're not doing it correctly. But, yeah. So that's how you have to do it now. So you're saying as long as you have a half an acre, you can have an aerobic system. You can, yes. Regardless of what you put on that half acre. Correct. Because we have aerobic system, you can have a drip system, which is most of y'all know this. You know the long black water hoses that have a whole bunch of holes that you put in your garden that spew? Mm -hmm. That is what a drip system is, except it's not a water hose. But that's exactly what it looks like. It's underground and it snakes. Mm -hmm. So you can put it on an itty bitty piece and it's under the ground and it just goes out. And then whenever it's finished, it cuts off on its own and it goes out. But that is one aerobic system. Another one is your surface spray that comes up. That's when you see the heads pop up and it goes around like a 
you know, people want to run through them, kids do, but rather than that, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then this one will not have conventional systems, but your conventional, which normally you have to have one acre for a conventional. This one will not have any conventionals. They will all be aerobic. But you can have at least half an acre. I can squeeze it on there. Most of the ones that like the pines are drip systems when it comes to being lakefront property. Like yours or yours, do y'all see? We have the sprinkler. You have we your sprinkler? Do. Okay. Do you stand? I'm on the city. Oh, well, that's good. City. City. We have a little bit of sprinkler. See, some people don't see them, they know they're on the drip. By the way, it's been going off like three times a day recently, so I don't know if that's because it was rain. frozen or we had the water going. The and rain. A lot of time, when you have a lot of rain, it comes in and then family comes in. They say they're seal proof, waterproof. They are not. Rain finds its way into your tank and it will it'll go. Okay. But you'll be good. If the red light comes on, you better call somebody. <laughs> red light where? Oh, on your box. <laughs> on the right, don't on that box. On your box. <laughs> 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 box. Don't feel don't that. Tell that red light. Light. Yeah. You can tell I don't know a lot of You know, know that pretty red light you see at night? <laughs> That's dope. I mean, good morning. But no, on our end, everything is good. Robert has received all the subdivision reviews. He sent everything that he needed to TCQ. They are reviewing so far. They have not asked any additional questions. I think now we're just on the up and over the hill, trying to get all of this taken care of with you guys and, and going forward with what needs to be done. Any further discussion? All right. Um, you'll present that at the next meeting. Okay. General Manager's report, Mr. Owen. Uh, I just want to tell you that um, the last couple of days uh, required some intense holiday concentration on the part of Dominic and his team to get through the cold snap. You may be seeing on TV throughout the Arklatex um, that there are some cities that have had some pretty profound difficulties. Um, we, we got through it pretty well. Uh, Dominic kept me informed throughout the, uh, the cold snap. And uh, I really appreciate the work that he does. Um, I have a real high degree of confidence in him and his expertise, and also his line of communication with the cities, in particular with Jefferson. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, communicated with Alan uh, during the uh, cold snap. There were some things going on in Jefferson that kind of uh, added to the water use the uh, plywood manufacturer worked through the holiday apparently they had they had some breakage at the, at the factory <laughs> and they instead of fixing them they just ramp it up the water use so so they were sucking in they were withdrawing they alone were withdrawing more water from Jefferson than we could put in into their tank uh, so so they had mayor had to get involved and uh, and uh, but they they basically told them we're not going to boil water just so you can, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, do some work at your place. So, so, so that was, but comparably to Storm Uri, communication was five times better. We were getting phone calls without calling there first. We were getting uh, feedback. Everybody was stepping up. Like I said, the difference is no boil water notices. Mm -hmm. The difference is. Uh, uh, we did this with the minimal stuff versus everybody on board last time. Okay, even though I was at the computer for 72 hours with some naps, uh, I didn't have to sleep at the plant. So there was there was some you know some improvements. There was no power outages that to report. So that was another good part. Uh, but some lessons from Yuri helped us. We learned a few new ones. Uh, no frozen tank this time. We, we we had some preventive actions ahead of this. So, so uh, I think overall good good <coughs> event per se for a, for an outcome, and uh, and we're still learning. So, and, uh, the city of of Angel, I mean, last time around we we didn't even know who to talk to. Some in, in some cases, or our, our phone number would not pick up. This one was was throughout working back and forth, asking questions sharing feedback, try on road, helping. Again, there was, in Marky Law, there was some stuff which happened 
which of course will happen exactly at those times. So, uh, but like I said, we were able to overcome it. When did you get some positive uh, uh, talk about the extra check that the, the our employees got? Was that the yes, they were very appreciative. <coughs> they, very appreciative. Uh, that, that helped a tremendous amount. Uh, uh, most of them had them spent the same day. <laughs> so uh, yes, there was definitely uh, uh, something everybody appreciated. Uh, we had a lot of feedback on your guys' effort that was noticed by the operators. That that little insert in the envelope with, with your guys' handwritten signature, not a copy, not a you know uh, uh, out of signature. That that meant a lot. A lot of those guys just just starting to believe that you guys care as much as they do so. Well okay. deserved. Well tell you, deserved. Tell you one reason why it's important. Um, we have a very small staff, um, 18 employees right now, and um, you experienced a little bit of turnover here over the last couple of months, which is I, th I think unusual, but it's still something that we're concerned with. And uh, where I was previously, it was even a larger concern, you know, 20 to 25 percent turnover. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're out here, you're st the, the uh, inventory of licensed plant operators, uh, they're, they're, they're not a dime a dozen. Um, what we have done here is often we hire them, we train them, and we've been blessed to keep them. In larger cities and larger areas, they're pretty trans transient, and they go to the next highest bidder. And um, what's interesting that I found in the short time that I've been here is people want to live here. It's where their family are. It's where they grew up. It's special to them. So uh, that type of thing reinforces their love and sense of community. And uh, it's not lost on our employees, and they're, they're, they're so grateful. I'm still getting to know everybody and the lay of the land here. But that's one of the things, I think I may have mentioned it to a couple of board members, that people live here because they love it, <laughs> and I get it. So thank you all very much. Our people are clearly our biggest asset, and I think we've reflected that back to them. I hope they understand that. Yeah. And I hope they understand the appreciation we have. It was greatly appreciated. Yeah. All right, anything further from you, Mr. Oak? Yeah, just one thing. Um, Texas Water Conservation Association annual meeting is the first week of March. It's March 1, 2, 3. Uh, it's going to be in Bastrop. Um, this is a legislative session year. Uh, there hasn't been any proposed legis. There's been a couple of things filed in the water sector, but it's been largely church house mouse quiet, and um, we're monitoring it. Um, um, it'll pick up in earnest in a couple of days uh, when they come into session January 10th. But I was just curious. Uh, uh, it's if. The water industry, from a policy standpoint, kind of has a two-year cycle, and the legislative year tends to be more interesting than the uh, non-legislative years, as far as our trade association meetings. So, um, just want to make sure y'all were aware that it's in Austin, plus or minus, faster up, and um, first week of March. The neat thing about that is. Walt is the president during this legislative session. We skip a year, and I don't call the num name of the lady that comes Lynn. in. Lynn Clancy. And then the next year, in the next legislative session, Mr. Owen's going to be the president of TWCA. So we've got that covered, I think, pretty good. And I imagine Sarah Kirkles is going to pick up her talk with yeah, us. Lynn is really close. good. Yeah. Really good. <coughs> you know, she's good amazing. Job. She was involved. Sarah, before she went to work for TWCA, she did the uh, sunset. She led the sunset team on the SRBA. Wow! And that's where I got to know her, because uh, and you know when when they said they were the TWCA leadership was talking about hiring her based on my experience in dealing with the SRBA, 
uh, during their sunset review, I said, oh my gosh, don't walk, run to get her. Right. She is absolutely one of the best. Absolutely. She keeps um, you in close touch with her. Oh, I know. I, I mean, it's just, they're, they're so lucky to have her. Anything else, Mr. Rowan? No, that is it. All right, for the good of the district, does anybody have anything fun or disastrous that they need to tell us about? <laughs> I'm glad we made it through that storm, and I would put before you the January 23rd, 2023 as the next regular meeting date. Is there any, any objection to that? I'll make a motion. a motion. Sorry. We made the segment to meet on January 23rd, 2023. Is there any discussion to that motion? If not, all in favor and keep us saying aye. 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 Those by the same sign. The motion carries unanimously. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. There is no discussion on this particular motion. So all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed by the same motion. The meeting is adjourned. We need to set a time before everybody leaves. So. Okay.